Hi, welcome to Living Your Best Life with Eddie Stone, founder and CEO of Touchstone Essentials. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Perry. Nice to be with you this evening. Okay, nice to be with you too. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. The uh, year has gotten off to a good start. I'm, I'm uh, excited about the year ahead. 2019 is going to be a good year for everyone. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Eddie, um, last week or this week, I found this article. FDA finds majority of herbal supplements at GNC, Walmart, Walgreens, and Target don't contain what they claim. Instead, cheap fillers like wheat and soy powder. It is such big company like this, okay? I mean, if we cannot rely on them, what should we do to buy, to buy the products, to find the good things for us? Well, it's a dilemma, right? Because as a consumer, you know, you, you want to be able to trust these recognized brands and organizations and uh, it really is, uh, it's disheartening and it can really, you know, make you lose confidence that anybody is really supplying the honest stuff for the things that they claim. And in the vitamin industry, products not meeting label claim, which is essentially the issue that you're talking about, I believe the origins of that story come from work done by the Attorney General's Office of New York. I believe that's where, um, if not this particular story, another one like it, where they went in and audited basically the labels and found when they sent off to independent labs that almost no brand that they tested, you know, had what was uh, supposed to be on, on the label in the product. And I think part of it is, that at general retail, um, from a pricing standpoint, they're forever trying to make the product cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so they outsource it to, you know, remote locations around the world where the labor force is um, uh, poor. And so they're not paying very much for the labor. Uh, they're sourcing those materials sometimes from um, third world countries abroad where you know, their own regulatory system inside the country is not very robust. And so this is, a, this, is a, this is an issue. And I think the bigger a company gets, sometimes the more they take their eye off of the, the details and, and the quality control. And so we do need regulators sometimes to step in and, and, and look at these uh, kinds of issues. Here's, here's what I would say to consumers. It's worth you taking the time to check out a company look at their website, um, look at their reputation with something like a Better Business Bureau or other uh, rating services just to see if people that are buying their products feel like they're getting a good service, you know, they honor their returns policies, are there people commenting on the products arriving on time and, and do people respond and say, hey, I've used this product, I've had a, a positive impact or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And I, I think you've got to look at that deep reputation. And I hate to say that, right? It ought to be as simple as going to the store and buying something, but we just don't live in that world uh, any longer. And I almost believe in this case that the larger, uh, more monolithic an organization is, maybe the, the more challenging it is to try to find a trustable uh, working environment. That's not to say that big corporations can't do good stuff, but you know, maybe it's even more of a challenge because if they're trying to make things too cheaply, um, then they're too cheap, right? And as a consumer, if you're buying something to consume that cost four, five, six dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars, nine, ten dollars for a month's supply, just consider um, how much of the real material can possibly be in there because there's a cost of transporting and getting that product on the store shelf. The store selling the product, they wanna make a, a profit. The distribution people, the people that distribute it to the store, they wanna make a profit. The trucking company wants to make a profit. The manufacturer wants to make a profit. The people supplying the raw material, they wanna make a profit. And so if you take eight, nine, $10, and you start dividing it up, they might be spending 25 cents on the raw ingredients that you're really looking to buy. If you're if you want to buy ginkgo biloba as a supplement, um, that's what you're after, right? But they've probably spent more money on the packaging of the product than they did the raw materials. 
You know, they probably spent more on the transportation. And so it unfortunately is a situation where consumers need to do some homework. And frankly, a lot of what I buy from a consumer standpoint from, from food or supplements, I don't just buy our brand. There are a few other things I buy. I, I do some legwork on the reputation. And in general, I try to buy from people where I can poke around and sort of see who owns the thing or I can understand a little bit more about their origins. So for example, for Touchstone, we have a social contract uh, with our customers and with our members. And that social contract, if you go to our website and you read the about section on the website, you can read a little bit about our philosophy on not using artificial sweeteners or artificial ingredients or fillers, no GMOs. So we, we sort of list this whole list of things that are a declaration from us to you because we believe in something called the golden rule. I don't know if the golden rule is something you're familiar with, but basically it says, hey, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But well, we use this stuff every day and we want people to be able to trust our, us as a source, just like we, we verify and audit and, and have built trust with our ingredient suppliers, but people I buy from, I wanna have that trust too. And so unfortunately in the world today, a consumer needs to do a little homework and if something looks like it's too cheap, then it's probably too cheap and you're probably not getting what you paid for. So I don't have a real steady answer for it, Perry. It's one of those situations where as consumers, we need to have a buyer beware attitude and do some homework. Yeah, but Eddie, you know, uh, some products that can be uh, highly expensive too, but then they can put something else that is cheap too, you know, like somewhere in Thailand, there are some brands, some products doing this and like DMC, I've been knowing it for a long time, you know, and when I read this kind of news, kind of disappointing, you know, it is disappointing to know that. <clears throat> so we really have to find a trustable company, you know, like. Yeah, no, I, I, and I agree with you that just because something's expensive, that doesn't always mean that it's what it's supposed to be. And so the bottom line is the, as a consumer, you just got to educate yourself. You got to look at reviews. I always, um, I always poke around on a company's website and just ask myself, does that look legitimate? You know, are there statements there that make sense to me? Is it the kind of commitments I would make to uh, consumers? But that's unfortunately the world we live in today and we got to do our homework. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your opinion, Eddie. Thank you. Sure. And what will we talk about today, Eddie? Well, I want to talk for a few minutes about the dangers of weed killers. And I'm not just talking about it in terms of the dangers associated with working with it in your home. You know, if you've got a garden in the back of your home, or even as you try to work on the shrubbery or the other flowers or things that you have uh, either outside your house or inside your house, I'm talking about it as it's a, a part of agriculture. Uh, glycosphate, um, or Roundup is the common commercial name, is a, is a problem now because it is essentially in every part of the food supply and not just um, in the United States or developed parts of the world. It's really everywhere in the world. And so I'm gonna, I want to circle back around and talk about that and give folks just an idea of, of the size of the problem and some thoughts about what they can do to sort of minimize exposure, but there's no way to eliminate it. But first, we have a, a really nice um, uh, a viewer that looks at what we're doing on a weekly basis and has been communicating with me named Marilyn. And Marilyn uh, asked me some questions about nuts. Uh, she specifically asked me about Brazil nuts. And so um, I thought I would speak a little bit about it based upon what she wanted to know because nuts are, particularly for someone like yourself or myself where we're trying to limit, I think you maybe have eliminated completely animal protein. Is that right? <laughs> no, because now I should to eat fish a bit for, for my health reason. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. Things change. Uh -huh. uh, my, my wife was a complete uh, vegetarian for a lot of years and for health reasons decided to go back and eat fish. And so that's okay. But the bottom line is you're trying to avoid general animal protein, right? You don't want to have it at every yeah. meal. And, and so nuts can be a terrific source of protein and other other things. And so let me give you, I, I got a little list here of some of the better nuts, right? And Brazil nuts are high on the list. And that's what our friend Marilyn was asking about. But almonds and cashews 
Hazelnuts, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of the flavor of hazelnuts, but they are super helpful, uh, healthy, I should say. Macadamia nuts, pecans, pine nuts, pistachios, walnuts, um, pistachios. I tell you, I, I love the Middle Eastern pastries uh, where they use pistachios because they use them in baklava and these other just wonderful, decadently rich sweets that I'm absolutely not eating while I'm on the transformation challenge this week. So it's, it's good stuff. But here's some of the things that um, uh, happen for you when you're eating nuts. One is nuts are good for your heart because they have healthy fats in them, um, which can be helpful in balancing particularly any kind of saturated fats you're getting from animal proteins. But they've also got fiber uh, that can help with the control of cholesterol and even uh, sugar spikes. So they're, they're good for your heart. They're good for helping to control the cholesterol. So overall, um, a diet that's, that's rich in nuts, uh, you will lower your risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease. Uh, they are also a terrific source of antioxidants. People tend to only think of antioxidants uh, being found in, say, fresh fruits and vegetables, which they certainly are. But you've got a rich source of vitamin E, which is a tremendous network antioxidant, so it's called, because it sort of empowers other antioxidants. And there's also other minerals, uh, such as selenium, uh, found in nuts that will act as a, uh, an antioxidant source. And so it's, it's fantastic in that regard. And over time, people that are fighting blood pressure problems will find that if they decrease the amount of, say, animal protein coming from uh, pork or beef or chicken and try to substitute more frequently nuts, they're going to see uh, improvements in their blood pressure and just all kinds of other, other factors, uh, such as um, a better control of blood sugars. Now, one of the myths about nuts is that because they're high in calorie, because they are high in fat, is that they will make you uh, gain weight or, or perhaps you know, uh, contribute to you uh, dealing with obesity. And of course, just like anything, right, you could eat too much of it. You could eat too many fresh blueberries and you can eat too many nuts and you can eat too much fish. But if you're eating uh, proper proportions or portions of nuts, you are not going to gain weight. And the fat that's found in nuts, along with the fiber and the protein, will actually help to boost your metabolism, particularly if you're doing any kind of exercise uh, whatsoever. So don't buy into that myth that because nuts are high in fat, because that is good healthy fat and it is not the same fat as you get from say cooked uh, animal proteins such as beef, chicken, and pork. They are also a good source of minerals, uh, particularly magnesium and copper, all of which are incredibly important for developing tissue uh, in the body, tissue repair, and just basically general uh, uh, mitochondrial function in the cell as a source of energy. And so nuts can be very rich. If you can buy nuts that organically grown, most of the time their nutrient density is higher. They have a little longer growing cycle. And so that's one reason why you might, if you can, if that option's available, you want to look for organic nuts. And of course, if you can eat them raw, I eat almost all nuts except maybe peanuts. I have to admit I like peanuts that are, are roasted, but I, most other nuts I eat raw. And if you can do that, that's not to say it has to be that way all the time. The fats in there are just that much more healthy because they haven't oxidized uh, from the heat of preparation. They also, because of the mineral complex, can support the function of your nervous system. And so there are some people that because of stress in their life, either from personal life or business life or the environment or whatever the heck it happens to be, or just watching the news, which would make people stressed out in today's world, uh, they'll find that um, it's better, they're better able to manage their, their, their stress and their nervous system because the mineral complex, the trace minerals found in nuts, help your nervous system function better, literally, physically uh, function better. And so the bottom line is, if you can incorporate nuts into your diet along with as many sort of rich fruits and vegetables as you can find, uh, you're going to be healthier. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very micronutrient uh, dense and rich. And from a calorie exchange standpoint, 
it's uh, terrific and will lead to uh, less inflammation in your body. So anyway, Marilyn, um, uh, my shout out to you uh, for making nuts a part of your uh, day. As she said, she just loves Brazil nuts. And so that's a, that's a good nut to love, so to speak, uh, because Brazil nuts are a spe a specifically very healthy. So, and Perry, what's your favorite nut? Um, almond has their nuts, many nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to think almonds are my favorite. Yeah. I had the, I mean, I had the, I, I have the same questions in me too. Like, do I eat too much nuts, you know, because they said a lot of fat. So now I feel more relief, you know, I can eat <laughs> as much as I, I want, right? I'll tell you, I, um, I consume about two to say two and a half cups of nuts a day. Oh, They're, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, it is. But it, for me, I treat it as a real source of protein and my energy level really responds to the fat in nuts. And so, and I love almonds. And I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but if you have raw almonds, mm -hmm. uh, you can put them on a flat baking sheet with, with uh, sides on it uh, and just a little bit of water and put it in your oven for um, on, like, let's say, 175 to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. So, make your conversion on that and let it sit in the oven for an hour plus, and in fact, people, you can look online and you can find very detailed and specific recipes about this, but you can cause those raw almonds to sprout. And they're really interesting. Uh, I like them warm, but even if you let them uh, dry out and cool off, they've got a, a very pleasant crunch to them. And it just makes it that much more interesting. And from a, from a health standpoint, as they're beginning to sprout like that, they're teeming with enzymes and a terrific source of energy. And in fact, there's a lot of athletes that that's part of their secret weapon, their secret plan, because those sprouted nuts digest so easily uh, that it's a very accessible source of energy when working out marathons, long bike rides, things of that kind. So that'll be something you can play with at the house there uh, to have a little and fun. The test is, and how is the test? It's very, it's very good. It's um, different from the raw nuts or not? Yeah, it, it, it tastes, it tastes, uh, the almond tastes like an almond. It's just a little crispier and it just has a, a, a little more interesting flavor to me. And uh -huh. so uh, I love some sprouted almonds. You can buy them at the store, but most of the time uh, they're very expensive per pound. And so if you've got the time to play with it, look online for a very specific recipe, you can even flavor it a little bit. You could put a little... Uh, soy sauce in the mix. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of have it adopt some flavor, some sea salt. Um, uh, nutritional yeast is another uh, great way to to enjoy on nuts. So it's, it's a, a nice little healthy recipe, something to have some fun with. Uh -huh. Now, Eddie, now you are in the 10 days of challenge too, right? So how is it I am. going now? <laughs> so I'm on, I'm on day nine. Oh, and okay. uh, for those that have been keeping up, so my daughter, Sorry and I, uh, we've been doing uh, two shakes a day and trying to eat sensibly at night. But she had a birthday yesterday, and we celebrated it on Saturday night. And I have to say that wasn't a sensible meal. We had a very nice meal. Um, but that's okay. I'm still down about five pounds. And my, my big goal wasn't necessarily to, to lose weight. I mean, I, I definitely overindulged in the holidays, and so a little weight loss was good. But mostly it was about hitting sort of a reset button for me. You know, take a break from, from the large or frequent meals or the sweet meals or rich meals you have during a holiday season and try to jumpstart, you know, my, my approach and dedication to good health in the new year. And one of the quick things you notice for anybody that's done this is your gut will clean up and you'll be less bloated um, and which will lead to less joint pain and, and less stiffness. So the body responds to a caloric restriction. And if you're having a shake in the morning, in my case, I'm having our super green juice and our organic super protein. Uh, sometimes we throw a little, uh, a little bit of frozen fruit in there, but for the most part, that's it. So that's going to be pretty low calorie, right? It's probably anywhere from say 150 to 250 calories. So not a lot, but I'm getting all the nutrients I need. But that caloric restriction causes my body and the cells in my body to do a reset. And so it's, it's, uh, it, it teaches me, gets me back on course and from, you know, when you overeat, it's almost like it becomes an addictive thing, right? You want to overeat yeah. again the next day 
even right. though you don't really need to, right? And so this is a way to sort of break that habit that we can get into. Plus, we know for gut health, particularly, and this is for, for the men listening, you've, you've really got to pay attention to this. You're, you're at, at this sort of stage in life, probably the number one risk factor you have from dying of cancer since smoking has really dropped from a percentage standpoint is colorectal cancer. And so anything you can do to really pay attention to your gut and your bowel uh, is important. And we know caloric restriction on a, on a basis where you're paying attention to nutrients can cause a regeneration of cells inside the bowel. And so uh, it's, um, you know, you don't have to use our products to do a transformation challenge. Go find yourself a couple good products. And just basically, if you can, for 10 days, hit that reset button, substitute out two meals a day. At the end of the 10 days, you're just going to feel better. You'll make some gains. You'll be proud of yourself. And during this challenge, do you eat nuts too? Or you stop for a while? Only for, only for my meal at night. So I'm pretty good about not snacking uh, mm -hmm. in between. Uh -huh. So I, I like to try to have the discipline of a limited number of meals and a limited number of calories. Uh -huh. Okay, Eddie, thank you for today. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, listen, I, let's, let's do this since we probably used up most of our time and I only briefly mention um, the glyphosate because it's a, it's a big issue that people need to be aware of. So let's, let's revisit this issue on our next show and make sure we spend some time on it because it's something we all need to pay attention to. Uh -huh. Okay. Eddie, thank you for being here. Thank uh, you, Perry. Have you, a good week. Sorry. See you next time. Okay. Bye. That's great. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.